Este é, bom dia a todas e todos que estão nos assistindo online. Este é o segundo dia é, do nosso seminário é, Iniciativas e Movimentos Antinucleares no, no, Brasil, no Brasil desde o fim da Guerra Fria. É, queria é, agradecer é, pela presença é, o professor Luc André Brunet, a, o, o doutor Marco Marzo e todos aqueles que eh, deram apoio para este evento. Então, o Augusto Luiz Barbosa, que está nos ajudando eh, na eh, condução técnica deste evento, e para garantir também a presença online de, eh, de muitas pessoas, tanto pelo Meet quanto pelo YouTube. Eh, o Victor Simoncelos, que está nos dando ajuda também na, na condução do evento aqui, e queria também manifestar o apoio para a Universidade Federal de Goiás, o Programa de Pós-Graduação em História do UFG, o Programa de Pós-Graduação em Ciência Política, que darão apoio para a realização deste evento, e claramente para o Arts and Humanities Research Council, que foi fundamental para a realização e também para o suporte a todos aqueles que são os os eventos ligados a esse a esse seminário, a esse ciclo de seminário que está sendo realizado eh, em vários países diferentes. Então, eh, é com satisfação que começo as, a, o, o segundo dia e passo para o inglês para garantir também eh, que o público externo possa nos seguir. Eh, este este painel é um painel onde temos uh, uh, a uh, honra e o privilégio de, de conversar uh, sobre... Uh, as origens, a atualidade e o futuro da, da BAC. Uh, e conversaremos com Marco Martz. Now I switch to English. So this first panel is about uh, uh, ABAC, which is uh, uh, the bilateral Argentine-Brazilian agency for control and account of nuclear materials and uh, equipments. Uh, in, and is uh, an agency that has been created in 1991 after several years uh, of uh, diplomatic and scientific efforts. So today we will talk about uh, uh, the origins, the present and the future of this uh, unique uh, solution given for uh, a mutual uh, control and for creating a climate of mutual trust between two countries that has been considered until the mid 80s as uh, rivals uh, in the nuclear in the nuclear sphere and uh, our guest today is uh, uh, dr marco marzo uh, who is currently the sec se the brazilian secretary uh, of the brazilian argentine agency for accounting and control of nuclear materials Uh, which is, as I told you before, uh, the agency responsible to apply safeguards in Argentina and Brazil. Uh, and, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, Marco Marzo was, uh, I can say, one also of the founders of this, uh, of this agency. In fact, prior to his uh, appointment, uh, it was from September 2014 to June 2016, was research professor and associated director of the integrated Uh, nuclear Security and Safeguards Laboratory at the University of Massachusetts uh, Lowell, and uh, uh, previously has been the director of the Division of Operation uh, that says Department of Sa in the Department of Safeguards of the International Atomic Energy Agency, which is re responsible for the implementation of safeguards in, in Asia. Uh, this was from May 2008 to August 2014. And before joining the IEA, it was Uh, the co-founder and the first senior officer for planning and evaluation of ABAKI from 1992 to 2006. And uh, uh, previously, he was director of the safeguards division of, at the Brazilian National Nuclear Energy Commission, and he was responsible for nuclear safeguards and physical protection of Brazilian nuclear facilities from 1983 to 1992. Uh, and uh, he led the Brazilian technical delegation to the negotiation for, of the bilateral safeguards agreement with uh, Argentina in the period, uh, in the specific period from 1990 to 90, uh, 1992. Uh, Dr. Marzo is a bachelor in physics uh, and a master of science in nuclear engineering from the University of Sao Paulo 
and holds also a, a doctorate in nuclear engineering from the University of Karlsruhe, and he got this title in 1981. So uh, I think we are more than privileged because uh, Dr. Marzo is actually uh, one uh, of uh, uh, probably of the persons who knows better how this the bilateral system was created, but also how the uh, SAFARC system was uh, created and implemented here in Brazil. So it will be uh, crucial and a, and a great pleasure to have him today. But now I want I want I want to pass. Uh, uh, the floor, uh, give the floor to, to Dr. Marzo. Thank you very much for being here in Goiânia today. Thank you, Carlo. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. <clears throat> I would like to thank you very much, the organizers of this event, and uh, in particular, the Federal University of Goiás. And uh, I'm very happy to introduce ABAC and uh, also the little bit uh, about the history of ABAC, the current uh, situation and uh, the challenges for the future. Okay, uh, I prepare some uh, uh, slides to facilitate the understanding. The next uh, slide then. Uh, the first, the, to talk about the origin of ABAC is very important to understand how was the situation of uh, non-proliferation and safeguards in Brazil and Argentina in the 60s and the 70s. Then the, this, the situation was that the, both countries have imported that time nuclear facilities and the nuclear material. For instance, in Brazil, Angra 1 was imported from US. Those facilities were under international safeguards. But the domestic program, uh, the, the national development in both countries were not under international safeguards, under, under international control. And uh, the situation was uh, very uh, critical because uh, at that time there were there were four, uh, I would say, hot points in the world uh, that uh, was the suspicion about the nuclear race, nuclear weapons development. One region was India, Pakistan, uh, the uh, Korean Peninsula. Uh, Israel and Egypt, and uh, Brazil and Argentina. That means there was a big uh, suspicion in the world that uh, the two countries were in a nuclear race. And uh, this uh, was also, the both countries were uh, subjected to internal pressure, as we have seen yesterday from the scientific community from uh, many parts, but also from ex, uh, su subject to external pressure. Uh, for instance, uh, in the early uh, 80s, the Brazil asked for a, a $1 billion loan from the World Bank, and uh, this was denied because the Brazil didn't have signed the, or joined the, the non-proliferation treaty. That, that means was also economical pressure in the country. Well, uh, and then uh, on top of that, both countries have developed the enrichment process that is very sensitive. You know? That was more or less the scenario at that time. The next uh, slide. This is just to, to as a, Example, this is the cover, the first page of the New York Times in 1983 when Argentina declared that they could enrich uranium. And you can see United States intelligence source have said Argentina has the capacity to make an atomic bomb in one to three years. And some intelligence reports have suggested it may already be trying to do so. 
this was the atmosphere at that time. Then uh, the next slide. Then the Brazil and Argentina started a confidence building process. Uh, it's interesting to see that the first, uh, the, the first uh, agreement, cooperation agreement between Argentina and Brazil was uh, during the military dictature. Uh, in 1980, President uh, 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 Medici uh, visited Argentina and uh, uh, made this agreement with uh, Argentina for the development application of a peaceful use of uh, nuclear energy. Actually, this uh, agreement was very important, but didn't uh, really fly. <laughs> well, it was very timid, the initiatives more related to some scientific uh, cooperation and also some industrial cooperation. This was possible because uh, in 1979, there was the diplomatic resolution of this uh, dispute, this controversy of the use of uh, water resources in the Prata Basin, uh, particular with the Itaipu uh, construction, uh, the hydroelectric power plant. After this uh, years, and the eight years were, were very exciting, because we had many, uh, many questions that influenced the two countries. <coughs> uh, but I can say the Malvinas War in Argentina, uh, the redemocratization of the two countries, the National Constituent Assembly in Brazil, uh, the uh, uh, Goiânia accident, that are a lot of uh, issues, a lot of uh, questions that uh, somehow impact the, the, the mind, uh, the non-proliferation nuclear affairs in both countries. And uh, then uh, when Alfonso was elected in Argentina, in Sarney, in Brazil, that uh, started the redemocratization of both countries, they started a uh, reapprochement between the two countries. And uh, Carlo uh, showed yesterday that even Professor Goldenberg had some initiatives. That means everything impacted the, this uh, development. But uh, I would say that the, uh, you, I can see many bilateral uh, declarations. Look, in Iguaçu in 85, many Brasilia, all the declarations at the presidential level. But I would say that the most important point was started in 1987, because the president, well, 83, Argentina declared the, was in, it was enriching, enriching uranium. In 87, Brazil did the same. And in July, 1987, President Sarney, with a political delegation, visited the top secret enrichment facility in Argentina, in Pio Canigeu, in the middle of nothing, <laughs> in the Patagonia. And this was a kind of ice break. And just one month later, a technical delegation of Brazil, actually three people, <laughs> the president of the Nuclear Energy Commission, Dr. Rex Nazaré, myself and the one uh, enrichment expert, we visited the, the facility. We asked a lot of questions. They showed us everything, even sensitive parts of the facility. And the, this started the uh, exchange of technical visits, uh, of uh, declarations, but also many, the building of many gr working groups in many areas, uh, many nuclear areas. And uh, I think it, uh, the one year later, in 1988, President Alfonso, with a delegation, visited the, the uh, Navy Nuclear Center in Aramar, also visited the enrichment, centrifuge enrichment lab in Brazil. That means this was very important 
for the approximation between the two countries. And then, in, in 19, uh, let me say that at that time, in 87, 88, Argentina already had, already had proposed a kind of mutual uh, inspection system. But Brazil at that time was more in favor to increase the technical cooperation. I think the two countries uh, realized that this would uh, reduce the internal and external pressure on the, their nuclear programs. But uh, up to early 90s, when, early 90s, when President Collor was elected. And then we had the two different presidents, uh, uh, Carlo Mene in Argentina and uh, Collor de Mello in Brazil. And uh, with the, the new gov government in Brazil, they decided to accept the Argentina proposal to introduce a kind of uh, common system, a mutual uh, inspection system in both countries. And this was very interesting in 1990. Uh, for safeguards expert in Argentina and three or four in Brazil, and I had the privilege to lead this uh, technical delegation, we developed, we established this common system of accounting control of nuclear material. In 1990, I, I, I uh, went 17 times to Buenos Aires, but that was a very intensive time. Well, we, we practically met every week, once in Buenos Aires, once in Rio. And uh, we were able to develop this system, is a set of criteria, procedures, to be applied in both countries. Uh, I would say it's a kind of, all facility operators in Brazil and Argentina would have the same rights and same obligations. No? Yeah, and uh, of course, it was a, criteria or set of criteria compatible with the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency criteria. Uh, of course, uh, that, that means the, this uh, common system had, had, has three levels, at, at the operator's level, at the nuclear facility level, at the national authorities, and then the bilateral level. Uh, and uh, the objective is very clear, is to detect timely the diversion of the nuclear materials. That means to avoid the, the uh, diversion of the nuclear materials to build a nuclear weapon. And this, I would, uh, I consider the most important declaration was the end of uh, uh, November 90, was the declaration of uh, Iguazu Falls, the, the two uh, president signed this declaration. They approved the, the application of this common system. They, uh, they approved the exchange of a list of facilities, even the secret, at that time was secret, the uh, facility, the domestic uh, nuclear program, the exchange of uh, inventories of nuclear material, how much uranium and uh, where the, the, the uranium uh, is in four to five days, and also to start uh, mutual inspections in four to five days. But they also decided to start negotiations with the International Atomic Energy Agency for a joint safeguards agreement based on the common system. And uh, also the initiative to put into force the Treaty of Tlatelolco, the uh, nuclear weapons free zone in Latin America and Caribbean. Uh, the, just a uh, curiosity, this is also the first page of New York Times, uh, the day after this declaration. And they say, look at this uh, uh, news. Argentina and Brazil renounce atomic weapons. <laughs> that, to see the importance of this declaration. Now it's very curious, because it actually, 45 days after this uh, early January, we exchanged with Argentina list of the facilities and the inventories. 
At that time, and we started some uh, inspections, both countries. But at that time, we supposed that the Nuclear Energy Commission of Brazil would inspect the Argentinian facilities, and the Atomic Energy Commission of Argentina would inspect the Brazilian facilities. But uh, the first uh, early 91, the both countries decided to build a new agency for two reasons. The first reason is if you want Brazilian inspector from the Nuclear Energy Commission perform inspection in Argentina and uh, found, find, uh, found some anomaly, some wrong thing, this would be an immediately a problem between the two countries. Uh, and uh, vice versa. And then the creation of uh, this new agency that uh, later was called ABAC uh, would uh, change the situation because uh, uh, an ABAC inspector performed the inspection. If he if fa uh, find something wrong, it's a problem between ABAC and the country, and not directly between the two countries. And uh, the other reason, also very important, is uh, the two countries decided to negotiate with the IAEA, uh, International Safeguards Agreement, based on the common system. And then they, they, uh, they would like to negotiate together with the IAEA. And uh, somehow, they the two countries took as model the Euratom system. That means we we have the national authorities of each country, a bilateral organization, and then the IAEA. These are the main reasons for the creation of a BAC. The bilateral agreement was signed just six months later, in July 91, in, in Guadalajara, Mexico, by, by accident, because the two presidents were there for a summit. They signed it the agreement. This is a kind of non-proliferation treaty between the two countries. Uh, the countries committed to use uh, nuclear energy just for exclusively for peaceful purpose. And uh, remember that uh, in our constitution, uh, approved in 88, all the nuclear activities in Brazil are exclusively for peaceful purpose. That this was the second uh, uh, how to say the count was emphasizing the, this uh, commitment. And then the bilateral agreement created officially this new agency, a BAC, to administer, to apply the common system in two countries. And uh, this is also very important. Bilateral agreement was ratified, entered into force in December 91. Less than five months, huh? less than five, about five months. This, who knows, the, our Brazilian and Argentinian Congress, this is a very, very, very short time. This re, uh, reflects the consensus in both countries uh, and support to this initiative. I think in Brazil, all uh, political parts approved this agreement. The next uh, slide, the, the objectives of ABAC, verify that all nuclear materials in all nuclear activities of both countries is used exclusively for peaceful purpose. And then we have to, to, to get to this, uh, this conclusion, we have to apply the common system of accounting and control of uh, nuclear materials. ABAC starts its activity in April 92. And uh, this picture shows the, that time uh, Minister of Re External Relations, Fernando Henrique Cardoso, and uh, the Foreign uh, Minister of Argentina, Ditella, they are, uh, were inaugurating the headquarters of ABAC. Next uh, slide. This is the structure of ABAC. This was defined established in the bilateral agreement 
and uh, this structure is still up to today. That means it's very uh, impressive. They didn't change the structure. Then we have the uh, the board of ABAC is the commission has two representatives from Brazil and two representatives from Argentina. The representatives are, are historically the president of the Nuclear Regulatory Authority. In the case of Brazil, presently is the president of Nuclear Energy Commission and one representative from the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. In the case of Brazil, the Tamaraty. And uh, it's important, they just decide by consensus. And they meet uh, regularly three times a year. And then the Secretariat of ABAC has two secretaries, one Argentina, one Brazilian, and we alternate every year. One year I am the secretary, and uh, the Argentinian secretary is deputy secretary, and we alternate every year. And we have uh, four technical sectors, the planning evaluation, uh, uh, operations, accounting, and the technical support. Every technical sector has one Argentina and one Brazilian. Everything is in ABAC is very symmetric. <laughs> and we have the ex inspectorate. Presently, is about 45 inspectors from each country. Very important. The inspectors are in no uh, permanent, not permanent staff uh, of ABAC. The inspectors are indicated by the country, that means Brazil and Argentina. Brazil indicated its uh, inspectors to the commission. The commission approves the, this uh, list of inspectors. And then the ABAC can convoke the inspectors for inspectors' missions. That uh, takes two, three weeks. And during this time, they are considered ABAC uh, staff. That means during, two, the, during the inspection mission, they have privileges and immunities, like all the ABAC officers. You know? And then we have this uh, administrative financial sector, is presently one Argentina, and uh, one uh, institutional relations uh, sector, presently is uh, Brasilia. And uh, in terms of gender equality, we are in very good shape because uh, Practically, we have uh, almost 50-50 in, in our agents. <laughs> uh, very important, the Brazilian inspector just verify Argentinian facilities and vice versa. That means it's a cross, uh, cross uh, inspection system. <clears throat> this is the present uh, list of nuclear facilities. And we have 51 nuclear facilities in Argentina and 25 facilities in Brazil, total 76 facilities. The geographic distribution of the nuclear facilities in this map, you see that in Brazil, the practically all the nuclear facilities are in the southeast, and the Argentina is more distributed, but mainly in the south of Argentina, my center and south of Argentina. Uh, I, I, we will distribute, then you can see more in detail the, the table. The next uh, slide. This is some figures on ABAC activities over the uh, more than 30 years now. The nuclear material presently under, under safeguards is more than 4,500, this uh, funny unit, SQs, significant quantities. Signif one significant quantity is the amount of nuclear material enough to build a rudimentary nuclear weapon. That means that uh, in both countries we have uh, more than 4,500 SQs. Would be enough to build more than 4,500 nuclear weapons, just for to get a flavor, a feeling of the importance. During this time, we performed more than 3,500 inspections, 
including more than 300 unannounced inspections. I will tell you about this. And then on average, this means more than 100 inspections a year. On average, three to four inspectors are daily in inspection missions. And our budget this year, this year is 4.5 US uh, dollars, million dollars. Uh, just to, even during the pandemic in 2020 and 2021, 21, even with the strong restrictions, the border between the two countries were closed, the non flights between both countries, we performed the more than 100 inspections per year. Uh, we had to rent uh, charter flights to transport the inspectors from a country to other. It was a very difficult time, but we comply with our annual verification plan. Next slide. Our verification activities. The first uh, safeguards activity is the nuclear material accountants. This is the fundamental safeguards measurement. That means the inspector goes to the facility, he measures, or she measures, the nuclear material by non-destructive analysis, radiation detectors, with radiation detectors, and uh, or collect a sample to be analyzed in labs, uh, destructive analysis. And the second measure are containment surveillance, uh, complementary measurements to maintain the continuity of knowledge. That means the inspector goes to a fuel fabrication plant and he measures a container, a barrel of material. If he can seal and uh, one year later the seal is intact, uh, we don't need to re-measure the material. It's just a complementary measure. <coughs> Next uh, slide, the inspections. <coughs> okay, to, sorry to verify the nuclear material inventory, and the ch inventory changes monthly. We have to verify the, uh, the, the countries have to declare the inventory changes, and we have to verify. And then we have it basically three types of inspections. Unannounced, unannounced inspections that we inform the country one week in advance that we will perform the inspection. Short notes random inspections that uh, we inform 24 hours in advance. That is more challenging. <laughs> and uh, unannounced inspection that we, the inspectors arrive at the, the gate of the facility and, and uh, they have to access the facility in two hours. It's a very challenging inspection, no? very challenging situation. And uh, mainly in the uh, enrichment facilities, we apply this unannounced inspection. Uh, next slide. <coughs> well, as I, I, I show in, in the declaration of Foz Iguaçu, the two countries decided to start uh, negotiation with the IA. And the uh, end of 91, in December 91, both countries, ABAC and the IA, um, assigned this, we call, quadripartite agreement, Argentina, Brazil, ABAC, and the IA, for application of safeguards. Uh, and uh, this was approved by the two countries two, uh, more than two years later, in March 94. And then you see, it took more time to be approved. <coughs> the, the ratification process was, was more difficult. Uh, there was not a consensus to sign this quadripartite agreement. But this is just a, a very standard uh, safeguards agreement with the IA to apply. IA has the right to apply its safeguards in all nuclear materials, in all nuclear activities. Well, then the question, well, now the... Brazil and Argentina are the most sa safeguarded countries in the world. Yes, this is true, because they, uh, the facilities are, uh, thank you, facilities are safeguarded by ABAC and by the IA. 
And then the, in the quadripartite agreement, there are a lot of provisions how the two organizations have to cooperate. Then sometimes it's a, a little bit paradoxical, but uh, you know, ABAC and the IAA show work jointly in accordance with the compatible safeguards criteria of the two organizations. And we have uh, compatible criteria. But uh, ABAC and the IAA shall each reach independent conclusion. And IAA has to avoid the unnecessary duplication of ABAC activities. And this is somehow very difficult to implement in the practice. Because we have to minimize the duplication of activity, but we have to get independent conclusion. Well, next slide, how is the situation now? We have good operational cooperation with the IA. We have guidelines for coordination of inspections, even with the unannounced inspection, common procedures. We use the same safeguards equipment. Uh, we prepare together uh, approaches for specific facilities, arrangements for uh, practical uh, verification. That means op from the operations point of view, we have a very good cooperation. Next slide. As I said, the excellent coordination of activities at the operational level. However, IAA is still duplicating practically all ABAC uh, verification activities. What, uh, in my opinion, is not uh, in the spirit of the agreement. IAA spent circa the 80 million dollars a year in Argentina and Brazil, a, a double of uh, the ABAC expenditure. And Argentina and Brazil together are the fourth largest Ex, uh, expense of the IAA safeguards department. Uh, first one, look, uh, presented is Iran. The second one is uh, Japan. Japan has a very big nuclear fuel cycle, more than 250 nuclear facilities. Third one is Canada, because uh, Canada has a lot of uh, uh, can do reactors, né? it's uh, very difficult to control and then Argentina and Brazil together. Uh, it's very, very large ex expenditure of the IA. Well, now the main challenge is to talk about a little bit about the future. Uh, the steady expansion of the nuclear programs in both countries is very, well, for us, very welcome, but uh, present new opportunities and challenges for ABAC especially because we have the same structure over the 30 years. The new technologies, new nuclear uh, technologies that are now in, under development, for instance, small modular reactors, intermediate and final uh, repositories, and uh, new uh, enrichment process, for instance, laser, and so it's always a challenge. Then uh, another challenge is the rap uh, rapid and continuous evolution of the measurement systems and the containment surveillance system. You know, somehow in every five years we have new surveillance systems, or uh, new uh, uh, improvement of new measurement systems, and we need to keep the up to modernize always our systems. Uh, possible changes in the legal framework that can happen in the future. And uh, the most important for us, because ABAC is a technical organization, is to maintain the credibility and the independence of our safeguards conclusions. Uh, I, I think I con conclude my short presentation. If possible, I uh, we prepare a video is a virtual visit to a back red carters. And when you go to Rio, if you have the opportunity to visit Rio, you can visit our red carters in the Rio downtown. You have a, just a flavor uh, watching this short video. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Marco.
please, Augustus, this video will be uh, streamed on the YouTube channel. So for the people who is connected in uh, Google Meet, it's not possible to uh, watch it. But uh, I mean, at the YouTube channel, it will be. It's operation at the ABAC headquarters in Rio de Janeiro. This is where we manage all of ABAC's operation, including the preparation and evaluation of inspections. In addition, we develop inspection techniques and... In April 1992, few months after the enter into force of the agreement between Argentina and Brazil for the exclusively peaceful uses of nuclear energy, the bilateral agreement, ABAC's secretariat started its operation at the ABAC headquarters in Rio de Janeiro. This is where we manage all of ABAC's operation, including the preparation and evaluation of inspections. In addition, we develop inspection techniques and train inspectors. Now, come and see our office. Oh, hello, Marzo. Vou estar com você já já, hein? I thought he was there with you. I'd have knocked. Now, let's check Elena's office. Our secretary, Elena Marceras, isn't here, but I bet she would wish you a great trip. In addition to our secretaries, I'll show you the other areas of this floor. The institutional relations sector coordinates ABAC's institutional activities with both countries and the institutions with which it has a cooperation agreement. Here, we also have the administrative financial department, which ensures efficiency in all ABAC's financial resources. Hey, later, we still have a lot of things to show. Finally, this is the area of planning and evaluation, which proposes the criteria for safeguards, inspection procedures, and evaluates the results of the verification activities. On the second floor, you will know a little more about the inspections in practice. Here is the accounting and control room, which processes and analyzes all the information received from the national authorities of the two countries and those obtained in the audits carried out in the nuclear facilities. The operations sector plans and carries out inspections. It also gives instructions and support to inspectors on the specific activities to be carried out. Finally, I will introduce you to technical support, responsible for, well, it's better if I let them tell you. Olá, eu sou Marcos Moreira, oficial de apoio técnico brasileiro. Trabalhamos aqui no laboratório de apoio técnico Tabac. Aqui a gente tem o nosso CPD para é, guarda dos bancos de dados e informações em geral da ABAC. A próxima coisa que eu vou mostrar para vocês é o sistema de estado de operacional, estado de saúde dos equipamentos que estão instalados nas instalações nucleares. A gente consegue verificar se estão todos funcionando adequadamente com uma rápida visualização desse monitor. A gente usa também no campo selos de vários tipos, entre eles os selos eletrônicos, que são usados para garantir que os materiais nucleares estão em determinado lugar, conforme declarado pelos operadores. Além disso, a gente usa outros equipamentos no campo, tipo esse detetor, para medir urânio 235. Agora eu gostaria de apresentar a vocês o outro oficial de apoio técnico. Olá, bom dia. Sou Aníbal Bonino, oficial de apoio técnico de Argentina, de ABAC y me encargo fundamentalmente de la parte de vigilancia. En vigilancia utilizamos este tipo de cámaras, que son cámaras stand-alone en algunos casos, o conectadas a un servidor. Un servidor de este tipo, en el cual se acumulan las imágenes de una o varias cámaras durante un periodo determinado, puede ser dos a tres meses, y después el inspector va, remueve la memoria de la cámara y utiliza una estación de revisión, que es una computadora como esta, en la cual un software especial nos permite visualizar todas las imágenes de ese periodo. También utilizamos en algunos casos detectores de neutrones. Este es un detector de neutrones que se utiliza para controlar el pasaje de combustibles en los reactores nucleares. Esas son parte de las tareas que hacemos en apoyo técnico. Now you know better how ABAC performs its inspections. But in addition to what we have seen here, we also have an office in Buenos Aires, Argentina, where some of our peers are concentrated and responsible for ensuring this important cooperation agreement between the two countries. I hope you enjoyed your virtual trip to ABAC and wish you all a great end of event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marco, for your great uh, uh, presentation. And uh, I would like to know if there is uh, 
Any question from uh, from the public here or from uh, uh, from the audience in Google Meet? Uh, I would like to welcome also Ambassador Sergio Duarte, who will be one of the uh, panelists in the next session. But I would like to welcome him right now. Uh, I don't know if there is any any question on uh, on this panel uh, by by the audience. Uh, uh, if not, I take the privilege also to ask some information to, to Dr. Marzo. Uh, Marco, this, uh, this is uh, one of, uh, uh, this workshop uh, is about also initi anti-nuclear uh, initiatives, but in this case is, uh, of course, uh, the anti-nuclear adjective, we use that uh, uh, for understanding how uh, Brazil and Argentina uh, created a system for avoiding external suspicion, but also internal suspicions about uh, uh, about the possible diversion of nuclear activities towards uh, weapon activities, because there was, as you told, external pressure, but also uh, a sort of internal pressure available after the the, uh, the democratization. Uh, one of uh, the issues, of course, uh, my first question is, uh, when you were negotiating uh, not just Abaki, but uh, where you were in the middle of the talks with the Argentines, uh, uh, with the Argentinian uh, colleagues since, uh, let's say, 1987. There was any pressure from the rest of the scientific community for having such assistance, like uh, the people that were external to the official scientific community or from the nuclear, the community of nuclear scientists in both commissions in, uh, in Brazil and Argentina. And one of the things dealing with the current affairs, but it, I think is also connected with uh, the construction of the confidence building, uh, uh, not just between Argentina and Brazil, but with the international community. And in this case, uh, all, uh, IA, the, the, the International Atomic Energy Agency. Why Argentina Brazil is the third case or the, one of the main cases of inspections around the world? Because I saw that they perform a lot of inspection and the accurate inspection costs more than the inspections that are of Abaki. The, 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 annual bu the yearly budget is, is different. Why that? Why there are no inspections in the uh, nuclear weapon countries that sometimes they have also strong nuclear industries or there are other systems there, I think at uh, Euratom in, uh, in Europe uh, or other safeguard system? Because it's a little bit uh, uh, surprising that of course Canada, Japan are targets, but Argentina and Brazil, I mean, they are not uh, uh, large nuclear uh, industrial powers. Thank you. Well, uh, first about the negotiations with Argentina. As you told us yesterday, uh, Professor Goldenberg was very, uh, uh, I would say, supportive to this approach, to, to approach the Argentinian authorities and to negotiate a, a, an agreement with Argentina. But not, well, I, I, maybe because he was the mentor, but uh, uh, the Brazilian Physics Society, the Brazilian Society for Science, uh, pro, pro, Progress of Science, they were very supportive to this initiative. Uh, they didn't uh, participate directly in the discussions or in, um, in, in the development of the common system, but uh, they were always very aware of the development. I personally, for instance, I, I remember very well, I personally uh, contacted, met many times uh, Luis Pingeli Rosa, that was one of the exponents of the the Brazilian Physics Society, uh, and to, to discuss uh, how, to, how to, to, to go further, and so that means they are aware, also Fernando Souza Barros, very important uh, peop physic, uh, people from, from the scientific community. And uh, it's also important to remember that in 1985 was uh, uh, constituted a uh, very important uh, permanent committee on nuclear policy. 
between the two countries, the leadership of the uh, Itamaraty from Brazilian side, uh, from Minister of Foreign Affairs. And in this, uh, that time, in this committee, uh, participate, were uh, participating also industrial area and uh, also scientific area. That means that indirectly they also participate in these uh, discussions. They have a very important uh, role in the in this uh, in this approach, I would say. Now, uh, sometimes I, I am also quite surprised that uh, the IA is still spend a lot of money. Because, uh, you know, the IA is always claiming that uh, they have uh, budget restrictions, they need to improve the efficiency and so keeping the eff effectiveness, but improving the efficiency. Uh, that means that uh, it's surprising. Somehow, and uh, very frankly speaking, I, I think they are not uh, complying fully with uh, the quadripartite uh, provisions. And uh, they are, uh, I, I don't want to exaggerate, but they, they face a back as a binational authority. But uh, ABAC is not a binational regulatory authority. And the two countries, they kept the regulatory authority. ABAC is really an independent safeguards organization. But this is the first, uh, I think, they, um, they yeah, they uh, somehow they confuse a little bit. Uh, they, and then they think they needed to perform all they duplicate all inspections, for instance. In the case of Eurato, early 90s, they have a called a new partnership approach. That means that under this new partnership approach, for instance, if you go two inspectors to perform an inspection, one from Eurato, one from, from the IA, they, they use the, the, what we call, call uh, one man, one job. That when one guy goes to audit the report, the other is measuring. In our case, they don't, uh, we don't have uh, this partnership approach. We go two inspectors, one from the back, one from the IA, but they both perform together the, the same activity. That means there's a, a lot of things that it, we can improve. And uh, the IA could reduce the budget, uh, increase the efficiency. And then also, I think uh, the uh, Argentina and Brazil are the two countries, uh, the mo uh, the two most relevant countries that they didn't yet join the additional protocol. And uh, I think he, this has an uh, impact in the internal safeguards evaluation of the IAEA. And then they, I, I, in my opinion, they, they, th they think they are not able to reduce the uh, nuclear verification in both countries. Okay. But this is, I am, am not anymore working at the IA. I, I guess these are the problems, but I'm not sure. Okay, thank you. I don't know if there are more questions. Uh, is, uh, if not, we can uh, thank again Dr. Martz and uh, go to the next session. I think we can have a five minutes break and then uh, go to the next uh, Google Meet link I, uh, and uh, the other YouTube link. I will send also the other, the other participants, uh, Christian Whitman and uh, Sergio Duarte for uh, going to the other uh, room. Thank you very much and uh, see you in a, in a few minutes. Bye-bye.